Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the newest set, X-Line, X-Line, X-Line. Anyway, the set has already been spoiled, some of the mythics and rares, which you probably should end the video if you don't want to see pictures, although they are incredibly blurry, so they're not like, you probably can't read them anyway. So why does this set have the highest expectation of any set in Magic history? Let me explain. First of all, there's no masterpieces. That's a big, big price gap. For the previous sets, Battle for Zendikar wasn't great. Over the Gate Watts wasn't great. And when I'm talking about great or not great, I'm talking about its financial implications. This is, of course, a finance channel. So when I mean great, we have Gideon at slightly over $20 for the lifetime of Battle for Zendikar, and then everything else is pennies on the dollars, right? There's pretty much, ugh, it's not great. Then Oath of the Gate Watts. I mean, a lot of the value was in the Mythics. And then you also had a lot of bannings, right? Emical, you didn't have the massive pieces then. And that explains why Liliana, the Last Hope, is the most expensive card in standard as of the time of this video. But masterpieces they gobbled up a lot of the value and therefore the sets didn't look on paper that bad it's still a lottery system it's still kind of a random hey i got lucky or i didn't get lucky it was it's quite possible for you to win fnm open 15 packs and get less than two dollars of cards and any of these sets so in addition to the bannings and where standard is today standard is not in a great place today uh, i blame it on the bannings they ban multiple decks five cards in total and that was after announcement saying that they're not going to ban they're going to ban and they had an emergency ban no matter what you call it i think the guardian was an emergency ban because it didn't it was not on the day that they ban and restricted announcements were supposed to be it was a random day after a wednesday after the monday so why does this set carry so much weight it's a due to where standard is right now no fnm promos anymore people are upset they are going more casual and you can tell i mean pirates and dinosaurs are incredibly casual right i mean those are the there's a reason transformers have dinosaurs in them now and there's a reason that Pirates, Pirates of the Caribbean, have done very well. The movie franchise, not recently, but in the past. Pirates and Dinosaurs. Is there anything more casual than those two? I don't know. But I've always wondered, as a side note, why Magic didn't spend more time creating its own lore, right? So it's copying lore from other people. Uh, goblins, merfolk, these have existed forever. I've always wondered what, what happens to the mirrors, right? I love the mirrors. They're very magic centric. They don't exist outside magic. And it's kind of cool to just like these little robots and uh, I, but they don't focus on that. It's back to pirates and dinosaurs. So it's, you know, <laughs> casual players, right? Let's get casual players to buy this set. Anyway, the reason this set has to be amazing, A, where standard is today, a terrible place. Participation is all time low. Local stores are having trouble even filling the eight persons needed to have a standard event. Two, value. It's not a question of does value drive pack openings because you can buy singles, right? You can buy singles. And I have never been a fan of buying singles as much as I am today. Buying boxes mean you get you just get hosed. Buying fat packs means you get hosed. Winning F and M to get if your F and M only gives you prize packs, you're gonna get hosed. There's a lack of value in these packs, even when you put in the masterpieces. But when you take out the masterpieces and you go over the various sets, it's really ugly. And no matter how much someone wants to say, oh, packs, these are great. We're going to buy so many of these. Oh, we're going to all make money opening booster packs. <laughs> if it was that easy, if it really was that easy, right? There are some things that on the backside you don't see. 
if you buy for 30 percent less than a distributor sells for of course you will make money that's obvious but most of us do not have that ability to buy a distribution or 30 percent so if someone buys it at retail or close to retail let's say a hundred dollars a box the chance for them to open a hundred dollars worth of product is so slim so slim but now if you buy an 80 dollar box i mean maybe you break even maybe you don't if you were to buy at seven dollars a box then there there's value in opening the box but that seven dollar box value isn't approachable by most people it's only approachable after the tank after the set tanks and people can get them discounted at distributors which sometimes happens now back to the value issue there is a value issue i looked over these cards uh you can go on mythic spoiler spoiler yeah dot com and you can figure out you know what they do and it's not impressive in my opinion so i'm like hmm is there another gimmick and there has to be another gimmick these cards are not strong enough on their own and the most important cards in this is not the new pirates and stuff it's the land cards that's where that's why when you ask conjure tarkir what made conjure tarkir conjure tarkir the fetch lands now removed what other value is in that set rtr what other value minus the shock lands are in that set not much not much at all and the fact that we have the buddy lands or the check lands that's not a great sign that is not a great sign i mean even if they had new lands we could kind of like all right maybe it works maybe it doesn't but we know these are not valuable in lands we know these are not highly valued these lands have been reprinted to oblivion and then some so we don't have value in the lands which is typically what you look at in terms of you know a set value what sets in the past rtr minus shock lands pretty much worthless gatecrafts even more so dragon maze like if you pour shock land great for you but you're probably not going to pull one and then you go to concert tarkir outside the fetch lands there's very little value in that set uh, and there was tremendous value when it was in standard you had thousand dollar decks we don't have that in standard currently which is good and bad the bad part is every card's going to tank even more than before because you don't have the pillars when it's already fetch lands the Conjure Tarkir is a obvious exception because of the fetch lands. This is not going to be one of them. So A, no fetch lands. No masterpieces. And the cards themselves don't look very strong. There has to be a gimmick. There just has to be. Like, I'm not sure what it is, but I'm almost certain that this can't be it. I mean, this cannot be it. The power level is very weak. I know a lot of you said, oh, I'm a cat is the most powerful set ever. It's going to take modern by storm <laughs> yeah if if i had a channel and i was selling you boxes that's what i would say to you right but i have no in interest in selling you booster boxes that are not going to hit expected value i don't own a store i'm just you know a random mtg financier financer and it's interesting to me how people are pushing boxes when you know hey you should buy a case of boxes and use it for an investment you should buy a box from me you should buy i'm gonna make another video but i have to do this like as a heart to heart about local game stores and why no one on youtube says support your local game store uh, especially people sponsored by guess what digital stores right every time you buy a card using that link you get paid money from that digital store or these youtuber gets and i have been pitched this model over and over again hey mobile app this hey this and even to the point but i just don't want to sell boxes right i can get boxes at 80 i can probably sell them assuming i don't ship out the entire content it's just the rares and mythics i can probably sell them for 85 80 90 maybe if like 85 is really greedy like it's the margins are not there maybe 90 right 90 i could sell it for and that would be okay with shipping and shipping you just the rares and mythics probably 85 because then i can bulk out and maybe the bulk is five dollars yeah probably five dollars but my point being 
Boxes just are not great value right now. Fat packs are not great value right now. None of this is great value right now. I cannot advise, if it would go against my own advice, which I have taken. I used to buy cases of RTR and of this stuff and you can watch the old channel. You can watch videos on, on the channel and you will know that, hey, I was really into it. But I stay the blank away from boxes. Fat, even fat packs, I used to be like, okay, boxes are really terrible, but these fat packs have been rising in price. You know how difficult it is to sell a fat pack? It's really difficult to ship a fat pack. They're not like that ideal size, right? It's probably easier to ship a booster. It's easier to ship a booster box and a fat pack because a fat pack won't fit into the $5.99 envelope as well. Like you can stuff it in, but you always feel like, oh, it's going to you know, break because it's not the right shape. Um, but the booster box is the right shape. So all in all, and a booster box barely fits, right? The bubbler. And... I, I wanted, I want this to be good. I want there to be value in these sets. And that's why I believe Ixalan has something incredible in it. It must. It's losing all the value from masterpieces. The set itself doesn't look that strong. And on top of all this, standard, it has to save standard. We all know our devastation is not saving standard. So this new set has to do it. What will it be? Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.